All right, we're back with another podcast for the team here at Mitten Mortgage Lending. Since last time uh, we put one of these out, we had a big event happen, UWM Live. Chris was one of the guest speakers that are part of it. How was it, Chris? I know it's one of the big events uh, in our industry. Yeah, UWM Live was awesome. I mean, there was there was over 5,000 people there, brokers, bankers, realtors, people traveled from all over the country, came here to Michigan. Um, you know, mortgage capital of the world, if you will. Yeah. Uh, everyone came here. Like I said, brokers came from all over. It was nice. Got to meet a lot of people. Got to share some best practices. A lot came out of the event. And, and I know our whole team that went, everyone that came with us, they all pulled a lot from the event. But uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar and maybe some of you aren't familiar. But uh, a, a massive product announcement happened. Matt Ishbia at United Wholesale Mortgage announced a, a brand new 0% down program which is conventional conventional zero percent down program which is awesome um and we're going to expand upon it here i know we're going to talk about it a little bit but it's 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 not even super cut and dry and really small it's 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 quite expanded there are two different options for it uh i i don't want to steal it all i know we're going to dig into it a little bit here but yeah zero percent down was announced and there was a lot that happened that day but that Stole the show that kind of stole the show yeah Yeah. so there's two options basically with the zero percent down conventional loan there's two kind of basically buckets you can fall in. Um, you know, one of them is you being a first-time home buyer. So if you're a first-time home buyer, and your credit is above 700, full stop. That's the criteria. You would qualify for zero percent down. You can make as much money as you want here. You can make a million dollars. You could buy a house forever. Zero um, percent down, and you'd be qualified if you're a first-time home buyer and if that credit score is above 700. With the zero percent down. It's limited to 3% of the purchase price or $15,000, whichever one of those comes first. So that's one bucket of it, all right? The other bucket is not, you do not have to be a first time home buyer. Uh, You need a minimum 620 FICO score. Your area medium income needs to be 80% or lower, which in Wayne County, Oakland, and Macomb, that basically means you make about $77,000 or less. And again, we can use just, if you're somebody where you're full time, but you work hourly, but you also work some overtime, we can use just the hourly uh, regular pay that you get to qualify for that. So there's ways uh, that we can address that. But again, that is for everybody. You don't have to be a first time home buyer. Your credit score just has to be above 620. And we have to be using under $77,000 for you to qualify for the loan. Yeah, and I, and I think it's important to note, you know, Mac talks about 80% area median income. Uh, don't, don't, I guess don't try to or don't disqual don't try to qualify or disqualify yourself for this program. Call us because you don't have to be a first time home buyer. In some cases you do, in some cases you don't. Your income may matter, it may not. Don't say, oh no, I made too much money last year because like Max said, we can kind of pick and choose which parts of your income we can use. Now doesn't doesn't mean we're guaranteed to be able to get you approved or not, mm-hmm. but we might be able to exclude your overtime. We might be able to exclude your bonus. We might be able to only use bits and pieces of your income to get you into it. So most importantly, call us, yeah. get a hold of us, shoot us an email, find us on social media, whatever you send, send a carrier pigeon. I don't care what you do, get a hold of us and let's talk about it because it, it is, I mean, quite literally opening doors for so many buyers and, and, and just providing so much opportunity that wasn't there before. Yeah, and I'm seeing this, I don't know about you, but I've already seen it in a multiple of uh, clients that, we, that I've talked to. So obviously there's clients that are purchasing, you know, it may be their first home, maybe it's for, you know, anything from like 100,000 to like $150,000, and they're the ones fitting in this 0% down, which is kind of normal, kind of what we have seen with stuff that's been around before. But I've also seen just in a conversation I had last night with a client who filled out an application today, they were going through and their income is well over 100K. Uh, Their credit score is 790. They're looking to purchase something in the 350 range. And the one thing he said was, and he's a first time buyer, and the one thing he said was, I kind of made a mistake though. I paid full cash for a quad recently. And my, you know, what I have saved dipped a little bit. So he's like, I'm probably gonna have to save a little bit more. And right away, first time buyer, credits above 700, light bulb went off. I'm like, we don't have to wait at all. He's going to look at a home tomorrow now because of this. So I'm like, we don't have to wait at all. We have 0% down. He's like, that's perfect. He's like, I thought I was gonna have to save for like another two, three months. 
uh, but now it's somebody that can jump right in. And again, he's looking at something for $350,000 tomorrow. So this doesn't just necessarily mean it's going to fit for somebody that may be purchasing a home for 150 or under 200 or something like that. It can fit in a lot of different areas. We could probably fit you into one of these buckets. Yeah. yeah. And if we can't, it's, it's okay. There's probably something else for you, but we can probably fit you in one of these buckets. Uh, similar to your story, I spoke with two clients yesterday. Their household combined income is over $200,000. They're first time home buyers. Their credit's over 700. Check. They're buying a 400. They're look tonight, just like you said, your guy is. They, I know right now they are shopping. They are looking at multiple $400,000 plus homes and they are shopping 0% down and, and they, they're qualified. They're in. They're going to put zero percent down. They make two hundred. They make over two hundred thousand dollars household income. They are shopping for four hundred thousand dollar homes with with a zero percent down program. So, yeah. like, again, don't qualify or disqualify yourself for this. Call us. Talk to us. Let us help you out with it. We will probably be able to fit you into one of these buckets. Yeah, for sure. And I, it's going to be, in my opinion, probably the product that's used the most by us this summer. It's been the product that's. Most talked about. Most talked about by far. I've had a lot of people call and we talk about it and we chat about it and some people decide to go a different route or do a different product or they want to put way more money down. So things change, but it is by far, the, it's, it's been the hottest product since it was announced and it's, it's, I've had more phone calls from it than, than probably any other product we've, we've ever had to offer. I mean, and it, the, it, yeah. The, yeah. The other thing I get asked about too, when I talk to clients about that, what are the fees associated to it? You know how much higher is the interest rate in those things so speaking of that what have you seen so this is this is my favorite part about it it's not most of these down payment programs that exist most of these dpas that exist they are it's the old it's it's the too good to be true right so most of them are hey man like they're not really giving you this money for nothing they're they're giving you a little bit but they're charging you for it on the rate you're getting a higher rate you're getting worse pricing you're getting these adjustments you're getting these mm -hmm. things because this is conventional Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have pricing adjustments and they have pricing caps built in. So when you hit these and you're, especially if you're a first time home buyer, there's going to be pricing and rate adjustment caps that are built in there. I have clients that are qualified for 0% down and because of their qualification, because they're a first time home buyer, they hit those rate adjustment caps. And some of them, because of these caps and the things that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac put in place, they're actually getting better interest rates with 0% down than other people who are out there maybe even putting five or 10% down that maybe aren't first time home buyers. So they're not getting those caps. So the rates and the programs are phenomenal because it is conventional. You are still in a regular conventional loan. This is still a conventional loan. So you actually don't, you're not paying extra. You're not paying a penalty. You're not being penalized. They're not hitting you for anything because we're putting 0% down. You are, you're getting all the benefits you would of any other regular conventional loan. Oh, and by the way, you're getting this, this assistance so that you truly can put 0% down. Yeah. So if you're out there, you're looking to be their first time home buyer, looking to make a move, reach out to us, Talk to us about the 0% down conventional program. Real estate agents, if you got clients that you've talked to that have, you know, that would fit into these criteria that are pre-approved right now, maybe with somebody else, and you think they would be better off taking advantage of this program, obviously let us know. If you got somebody that's approved for a MIJDA right now, I would definitely be calling us to check this out uh, for sure because I think it's something that would be better suited for a lot of people out there uh, with this product. So next thing, talking about uh, going through our loan kind of product of the day, that's a the product that we we're talking about right there, the 0% down. But this one's more, not necessarily a product, but an option, I guess you could call it, for when it comes to purchasing a home for certain situations, and that's using a gift of equity. So Chris, tell us about what a gift of equity is. Before I get into the gift of equity, I guess I want to talk about something else that'll help explain the gift of equity a little bit more clearly. So generally speaking, I, not, not our special 0% down program, you know, bar, mm -hmm. barring something special like that, Generally speaking, anytime you buy a house, there are some things that you're just going to have to pay when you buy a house. I know when you refi, people talk about rolling costs in, rolling, rolling fees in, rolling that in. When we refi, whole different game. Refinance and purchase, separate categories. When you're buying though, when anyone's buying a house, they have to pay their down payment, obviously, you know, barring a 0% or something like I said, they have to pay their down payment and they have to pay their closing costs. It's, it, it, they have to be paid and they have to be paid out of pocket. Uh, lenders don't let you roll a cost in on a purchase. They don't want you, you know, starting with negative equity essentially. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay those things out of pocket. 
So the reason that I wanted to talk about that and the reason that I wanted to mention that is because a gift of equity, what a gift of equity is, is if you are purchasing from a family member, it's got to be from a family member. So we're talking grandma, mom, dad. Yep, yeah. yep. So exactly. Grandma, mom, dad. It's got to be from a family member. But if you're buying a house from a family member, and this happens all the time, the family member says, hey, Mac, we'd love to sell you the house. We're done with it. We got what we needed out of it. We only owe 100000 on this home. The home is worth one fifty. I'm kind of just giving you guys some generic numbers now. Home is worth one fifty. We know it is. The neighbors just sold for one fifty a couple weeks ago. We owe a hundred thousand on it. We we don't need to make money on it. We don't mind. We're ready to move on. We'll sell it to you for a hundred thousand, Mac. Well, rather than them selling you the house for a hundred thousand, they have fifty thousand in equity. They owe a hundred. It's worth one fifty. So the person selling you this house has fifty thousand in equity. The gift of equity is just that. They can gift you that $50,000 in equity and you can now use that $50,000, that, that gift of equity, to pay that down payment and pay those closing costs. So the reason I started with the down payment and the closing costs is to bring it full circle for everyone. If you go gift of equity and you have a family member selling you a home and they want to you know, quote unquote give you a deal or give you a discount, well. Let's use that equity and use that gift of equity so that you do not have to pay your down payment out of pocket. You do not have to pay your closing costs out of pocket. And that $50,000 in equity that, that they effectively don't want, that they told you they don't need, just give us hundred grand for it, that $50,000 in equity can be used to cover all of those costs and you can truly buy a house and not pay down payment out of pocket and not pay closing costs out of pocket. You can truly buy a house show up to the closing table with zero dollars, sign all your papers, walk away owning a home, but you now own a home that you did technically put a down payment on mm -hmm. and pay all of your closing costs, but you didn't pay them. The person who sold you that house gifted you that equity and that equity paid for all of it. Yeah, we got a, a situation coming up later on. That's exactly what happened. That I, was was I know you've got a good one that yeah, we can talk it about. Yeah, they came with zero, uh, with zero dollars to closing, were able to close and get themselves a new home. The other thing, though, not mentioned as well is you can pay off debt with this equity as well. So you can pay off car payments, student loans, credit card debt. I've had people use gift of equity oh, yeah. that needed to pay those things down so they could qualify. I had them pay it down because they needed to to increase their credit score so they qualified. So you can pay that down payment, you can pay that cash to close, but or uh, sorry, that closing cost, but also any debt that you may have, again, if there's enough equity there, or even if it's just a little bit, you know, maybe there's just one car we want to pay off. You can pay those things off using that equity and that again just gets rolled into your purchase and your new loan amount. That is something that's truly, truly super beneficial to a lot of people. And it, and it really allows us, I can't tell you how many times throughout the years someone's called me and said, hey, my parents want to sell me their house. I just talked to my bank. They said I don't qualify. So-and-so said I should give you guys a call. And I immediately dive into it. Okay, first things first, your family's selling you a house. What's the purchase price? Well, same story. Well, my parents said it's worth 150, but they told me they'll give it to me for 100. But I talked to the guy at the bank and he said, I have too much debt, I don't qualify for this. Well, we start diving in, I start looking at what, what we can pay off. I can't tell you how many people have told me, tried to buy my mom's house, but I can't, I don't qualify. I look into it and say, wait a minute, your mom has all this equity, she doesn't want it, she was already giving you a deal, let's pay off this, let's pay off that, let's pay off your credit card, let's pay off your car, let's, you know, whatever. whatever. And, and as high as interest rates are right now, buying a home, you know, everyone's rates are so high, rates are so high, they're still lower than those credit card payments. Those credit, those credit, cards, credit are, rates. Those credit cards are 30%. Yeah, and they're still lower than a lot of those car rates that you're getting out there too. Oh, yeah. So rolling this all into a mortgage that you can eventually refinance when they do drop to six, five and a half, five, hopefully four and a half percent one day, like, that's the way to go. Don't pay 15% or 20% on something when you can roll it in and pay seven. Rolling it all into a mortgage too, you know, back, back to just, you know, being financially savvy. When you're buying a house, when you're buying a mortgage, generally speaking, you're buying an appreciating asset. So rolling, it, rolling that stuff into a mortgage, that home, getting into that home, starting to pay that, you own that home over time in theory, that home's doing nothing but appreciating. And like you said, down the road, Let's refi it. Let's figure mm -hmm. it out. You know, let's go from there. But 
I don't even want to get off the gift of equity standpoint, but yeah, like rates <laughs> ra rates are high, but don't don't be paying credit card debt at thirty percent mm -hmm. if if we've got an option to to get a little bit of that consolidated at a much lower rate. Yeah, and that takes us right into our loan of the month, uh, which w is one that that I did and very similar situation. Pretty almost exactly. Client said, uh, you know, my parents owe a little over a hundred, and they just want to sell it to us for that amount. And but we don't have too many funds put away. Is there something we can do? And that's really how it started. And so I said, yeah, we can use a gift of equity that can cover your down payment, your cash to close, those types of things. So we went into it, and after looking at the client's finances, really we needed we were our debt to income was too high. They weren't going to qualify we needed to pay off some of this debt. So I said, hey, we can do a gift of equity. You guys have a car, they owe, I don't know, 30-ish, 35-ish on it. I was like, we can pay that car completely off. You can lose that payment and then you would qualify. But there was also two kind of higher ones on there. It ended up being a uh, personal loan that they had and the other car payment. The other car payment wasn't as big. They only owed like, I think it was like $8,000 on it or something like that. Um, and they were like, well, what if we just pay off the personal loan and the smaller car? We feel like we got a good interest rate on the higher payment. Do the math. Yeah, we can do that too. Eventually, after a little bit, they're like, well, why don't we roll them all three of them in? Let's see what it looks like then. By the end of the loan, they literally walked out of the, their process, paid $0, got a home, and were completely debt-free. They had like three small credit cards, paid those boys off too. So they got rid of all of their debt, and now all they have is a mortgage payment. So not only is that going to open up all kinds of cash flow opportunities for them, but that credit score that they were a little worried about when it came time to refinance, that credit score could shoot up now because now all they have to take care of is that mortgage payment. And yeah, did they end up paying a little bit more um, with their mortgage? Yeah, because they rolled everything into it. But at the same time, it far outweighed what they were going to be paying monthly. Their monthly expenses yeah. on, a, on a mortgage payment only was far less than their monthly expenses on a mortgage payment plus a car, plus a car, plus a credit card, plus a credit card. Yeah. So they were saving money. And, and to recap, just to, to, to pull it all back together, you're telling me that this almost sounds too good to be true. I know it's not because I know we do it here every day. No, I'm looking but, at the final documents right here. We'll put them on the screen too. But you're telling me these people came to you. They, they Let's check the boxes. They, they bought a house and put 10% down. Yep, 10%. So they have 10% equity in their home which is more than a lot of people start with. Most first time buyers are putting 3% or 5% or something down. So they bought a house with 10% equity. So they, are, they now own an asset with at least 10% equity. They paid off a car. They paid off another car. They paid off two credit cards. They paid off two cars, a personal loan, and then three small credit cards. A per okay, I'm sorry. So we bought a house, we got 10% equity. We paid off a car. We paid off another car. We paid off a personal loan. And how many credit cards? Uh, three small ones. And three credit cards. So we paid off six items. Well, we got a house with 10% equity and we paid off six, six items. items. Yeah. And they showed up to closing to purchase this, to, to buy this house that we did. We put all this money in, you know, we have all this money up and they brought zero dollars to closing. Zero dollars to closing. That gift. You know, there was $38,000 in car loans and personal loans, some more in credit card, $20,000 in down payment, uh, and about $9,000 in closing costs. All that cover showing up with $0 cash to close, getting themselves a house, getting themselves a house too that they got equity in. I yeah. mean, mom and dad hooked them up. Yeah, mom, mom and dad hooked dad. them up big time. And, and, and that's the thing. This isn't for everyone. And they're happy to do so. Yeah. yeah happy to do so. And this isn't for everyone, but... If you've got a family member that's willing to sell you a house and wants to give you a deal in any way, shape, or form, you you have to go gift of equity. Yeah. You absolutely have to go gift of equity. Listen, it can really it can really set you up for future financial success. It changes these that. people's life in terms of, of future financial success. Yeah. Because they 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 you they essentially have a house now with 10% equity and they're debt free. Yeah, and they got more equity in that because it appraised for way more than they bought it still. So there's still more oh, so there's equity there too. there's even more equity oh, there. Yeah. That was just based on the purchase price that, that we Correct. landed on. Correct. And I'm guessing you helped them come up with that purchase price because that was what helped get enough equity to make sure that all this happened. Yep. And you're telling me that even what the purchase price was, it's still appraised higher. Correct. So they're in a house with a ton of equity mm -hmm. and they are now no cars, no personal loans, no credit cards. They're, they're essentially debt free. They debt free without their mortgage. Yep. Debt free, just I mean, the mortgage. That is, that's as that's as good of a story as I've heard in a long time in terms of a definitely a great way to start. So yeah, if you're yeah. purchasing, if 
If you're purchasing a home from a family member, this is something you definitely got to reach out, talk to us about. And I mean, even if you've talked about purchasing with it, this is definitely the way to go. And, and I don't want to, you know, we're, we're, we don't, we're, not, we're not even going to talk about other lenders. We're going to talk about us. But I will say this. There are so many lenders out there that do not know what a gift of equity is. Tons. I cannot tell you how many times I've spoken to someone who was buying a house from friends or, buy, or not friends, who was buying a house from family and they weren't doing it this way and we got it set up this way. It, it's... This is far less common than it is common. This is a little bit this is a little bit more advanced, I would say, and a lot of people don't know about it. So, if you're buying a house from a family member and you're not working with us, call us. But if you're not working with us, ask the person you're working with if you're doing a gift of equity, and if you're not, ask them why not. And if they don't know why not, again, back to call us. Yeah, definitely the way to go. I remember when I did my first gift of equity when I was that young banker that didn't know much that's going on, still don't feel like I know anything that's going on, but I was sitting right over there and I remember telling the banker next to me about the situation that was going on and you coming running out of your office going, gift of equity, gift of equity, we've got to do a gift of equity, and then breaking it down and showing us what a gift of equity was. And yeah, when I heard what it was, coolest program ever. It's the only way to do it if you're buying a house from family, in my opinion. Yeah. So last thing we want to hit on before we get out of here is it is now June when we're filming this, June when this will be released. Buying season is 100% officially here. School's out. People are making moves. More houses hitting the market. The market that was already pretty active in April and May is going to get more active. It's going to get more competitive. And the thing about the competitive part is you've got to be prepared to go in and make offers right away when you see a house. Because if houses were lasting four or five or six days you know, a month, month and a half ago, it's going to turn to two, three, and four days right now. It's going to be rapid. So if you go see a home, you better be ready. Max said it. Summer is here, and I know we've talked about it before. If you're not pre-approved, if you think you are buying, if you think you might buy in the next three months mm-hmm. and you're not pre-approved, you are behind the eight ball. Yeah. You are losing. You are missing offers. Your dream home will be sold to someone who's prepared and someone who's ready. If you're not pre-approved, get pre-approved. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's not a big daunting process. It's not, it's not crazy. Might we ask you for some docs? Might we get some stuff from you? Yeah, not, not even might, we're going to mm-hmm. get some docs from you. We're going to ask for some stuff from you. But I can assure you, you want to gather those docs right now. Yeah. You do not want to gather those docs after you go see the house, you're all excited about it and there's 30 offers in on that house because what happens if you get pre-approved now is we can we can vet you out we can look through your income we can do it we can do income calcs we can have an underwriter look at it if we're a little bit unsure and what what that leads to is super strong offers for you if if you want to buy a house and the listing agent has 30 offers in front of them but I already had your loan underwritten or I already had your income underwritten I can call that listing agent and say hey I am beyond confident in Max ability to purchase a home. I have his income underwritten. I have his documents. I have his credit report. I have everything. Mitten Mortgage Lending, we're not gonna, you know, we're, we've, we've vetted this out. We've taken our time with it. This person's approved. If you're not doing that, if you haven't done that already, you're going to lose out on an offer to someone that did that. I, 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 can, I can guarantee you, I've seen it happen already. Like you said, we're in June now. I have already seen that happen multiple times and it's only june we've still got we still got the rest of june Mm -hmm. we've still got july we've still got august i know it even dips into september usually kind of when school starts i mean we it's here and and if you're not pre-approved you're you're going to be missing out i I can guarantee it yeah and and by getting pre-approved we could also see what what are these programs like we're mentioning which programs you fit into you know what is it that you can afford what can you budget right now there's a lot of people when they get pre-approved and that's the question i ask is like what are you guys budgeting for this house payment to be? And they're like, not really sure. Just want to kind of see what, what it would look like if we purchase X home or whatever, you know, one, two, three main street over in Trenton, you know, we want to see what that would look like and can we budget for that? And then you have a basis. Okay. Maybe that's too high or maybe that's right on point. Maybe you think, Oh man, we could afford a little bit more than that. So you get an idea on where you're going to be as far as that goes. That way you're not looking at homes that maybe you can't afford and you're not wasting time that way as well. Um, but there's opportunities for to make your offer stronger when you want to make them. You know, appraisal waivers are a big thing, 
especially when things are competitive. Those are things that we can look at before you put in offers is, can you get that appraisal waiver so your offer stands out and makes it that much stronger? And lastly too, that for me, another thing is, there are, not a lot, but there are, op or there are things that pop up on people's credit reports that they had no clue about. And it gives you time to clean those things up. Maybe they were a mistake that you made. Maybe it's, I, I mean, the number of times I've had a client that got a credit card or they got a small personal loan and forgot about it. You know, that's on there. The those Kohl's, are, the Kohl's card. My wife forgot to pay the Kohl's card. Yeah, yeah the Kohl's card. <laughs> the dreaded Kohl's card. So uh, Home Depot gets, yeah, the Home Depot card's out there too. But the, you know, cleaning the, that stuff up uh, will, again, make you better ready to buy because you don't want to think that you're ready to go put in that, um, fill out that application last second because you want to make an offer on a house that you saw an hour ago, and now this is an issue. you got to get that cleaned up now. Well, and, and to expand upon that, I mean, I could talk to you for several hours about why people should get pre-approved now instead of waiting, but yes, credit issues pop up, but let's pretend you have no issues, your credit is fine, you have enough income, you have enough assets, and everything is fine, but maybe your credit score is 720 and maybe I look at your credit report and I say oh if you just paid this credit card down a little bit your credit score would jump to 760 and Mac how much would you like it if by going from 720 to 760 I could drop your interest rate a little bit because now you have better credit by the way when I drop your rate a little bit your payments now $70 a month cheaper so do you want to increase your purchase price a little bit because we bumped your credit score and now your payment's a little bit better? So you might, you, might you might know you qualify. You might be sitting there saying, I know I qualify. I don't need to call these guys. I'll call them when I find something. There are some of you guys out there like that. There are some, there are some, there are some people out there that, that they know they qualify and I know they qualify and we all know they qualify. But why just hope it works? But, like, but, why, but why? I mean, and why hope it works? And beyond that, you might qualify. But how much better... Can we make your qualification? Mm -hmm. How much lower can we make your interest rate? How much better can we make this whole picture of home ownership for you if you call us now? Because if you call me now and your credit score is 720 and we start shopping and we start looking and I have you pay down your credit card tomorrow and we do a credit rescore next week and then you find a house next week, great. We're gonna close with a better, we're gonna close with a better rate, we're gonna close with a better credit score. If you call me when you're holding your purchase contract and say, hey, I got it, here you go, I'm ready to go. Yeah, sure, you qualify, but I've got to close the loan with whatever credit score you have, and I have no room to really do my job and do our job and make sure that we're getting you the best rate and we're getting you the best payment and we're getting you all those things. So you might qualify. But how much better will you qualify and how much stronger will your offers be if you just get pre-approved now? Honestly. It, it, it's, it's a 10 minute application, maybe another 10 minute phone call. And if we have to go through free. some stuff, maybe another 10 minute phone call. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's free. And if you don't buy, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You're ready for the next time. You're a little bit more knowledgeable the next time you, do, the next time you go to do this. So call us, ask those questions. Uh, we talk about this all the time. There are no dumb questions when it comes to this. You're buying a house. We're not ordering a pizza on an app. Like mm -hmm. this is a big investment. Ask questions, get qualified now, and 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 go go win your offers. Don't 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 go don't be one of the many in the sea of pre-approvals that come across someone's desk. Make your pre-approval stand out. Get approved now, and and I mean work with a lender that that is trusted locally for dishing out good pre-approvals. Yeah, yeah, and that's something right there. I don't think anyone's ever said, man, I got pre-approved too early. I don't think that's ever been said. I've never... Should have got pre-approved so early. I've never had... I, I've been doing this for a long time. I have I haven't run into that one yet. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of good info today. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for listening. I'm Mac. That's Chris. And we'll see you guys next time.